On paper, this should be one of the best brands that I've ever reviewed. Top tier specifications and build quality packed into an affordable watch that crucially has an original design. That last factor has been absent from many rival Far East offerings up until this point, with the majority fully committing to the lucrative homage route, where they rebadge others' designs for cheap prices. Well, in recent times, Phoebus has been going against the grain, with a string of bold, experimental designs that instantly stand out from the crowd. I've had them on my radar for a while, so when they reached out asking if they could send one of their new models my way, it was a no-brainer. If you're wondering if these weirdly named watches are worth a pickup, then keep listening. How come every micro brand ships their watches in better boxes than the big brands? Cost cutting, I expect, as this Phoebus arrived in a robust nylon coated box with a snap fastener and a faux suede lining. While not particularly impressive, you get the impression that they do care about the product arriving intact. Within is the Apollo, which is designed to offer some bold aeronautical slash galactic theming. Honestly, I can see this at home on Darth Vader's wrist, perhaps the black version even more so. If anything, I'm late to the game here to be honest. I've had bigger fish to fry, so this one's been on the back burner until now. That doesn't detract from the fact that this is one of Phoebus's most expensive models. Though isn't very pricey in the grand scheme of things, coming in at just €375 Euro or around £315 at the time of recording. The brands jumped on the titanium hype train, with this being their first release in that material, hence the price increase over the more easily produced steel models. It's also bigger, coming in with a 41.2mm diameter, a 12.8mm thickness, and a 48mm lug-to-lug -lug that becomes 52.8mm when the protruding end links are considered. Unsurprisingly, the Apollo best accommodates larger arms, dwarfing my skinny wrist in the process. If you're also slimmer wristed, then Phoebus does have some smaller alternatives on their site, so my quality analysis could still prove somewhat useful. The case shape is reminiscent of the Signum Cuda dive watches that I looked at for my small diver roundup, with an SKX-like shape that's been modified to a more angular structure. Phoebus originally had this watch listed as having an ultra hex coating, which I found unusual considering that rival brand RZE markets this as their proprietary trademarked coating. I contacted RZE to see if there was any sort of connection that I hadn't realized, but it turns out that Phoebus were falsely using this term on their listings. They claim to have been misled by their coating factory into thinking the term was an industry standard name for this type of coating. <laughs> Are you serious? Apparently Phoebus has since changed this, but not before I got my screenshots. Naughty naughty. Still, there are clear differences between the surfaces, with this Phoebus having a glossier, smoother finish that I think looks slightly better, but won't hide scuffs and scrapes quite as well. It also has a slightly lower hardness rating than the RZE, but is still much harder than 316L steel, if the 800HV is to be believed. Despite the basic case shape, it is strikingly well cut, with extremely defined edges, to the extent where parts of the underside are quite sharp, especially towards the lug area. Due to the way this watch sits, or should I say hovers on my thin wrist, I can't confirm whether this would be an irritation for those with manly proportions, but it might be worth checking with bigger armed reviewers first for clarification. Perhaps the most prominent part of the watch is the large crown that juts out at 4 o'clock. Whether this has been designed for easy operation while wearing spacesuit gloves, I'm unsure, but the sheer size of the thing ensures that grip won't be an issue. To some extent, I think it's overkill, as it leaves the watch looking rather lopsided, and as opposed to the likes of the Seiko Willard, it doesn't have a wide case to blend into. As expected, it performs admirably with a smooth motion and a long threaded section to aid the water performance. I don't doubt for a second that this Phoebus easily hits the 2080M destination either, as the overall construction of this Apollo feels extremely sturdy, especially the thick screwed case rear. Here there's a lasering of a spaceman stood in an extremely questionable pose. This will be instantly recognisable if you're at all familiar with 20th century history. Yeah, not sure exactly why he's doing this, but uh, the guys of Phoebus might want to revise this for future releases. Perhaps Hail Hydra would have been a more appropriate alternative given the octopus branding elsewhere on the watch. Something that may or may not need revising is the bracelet. As you can tell from the colour, this is also titanium, and as with the RZE, quality isn't really the problem here. That fitted to the Apollo is arguably even better, with less rattly solid H-shaped links and another milled clasp that's smoother to operate. However, the same old issue has cropped up again. The tone of the bracelet is a far worse match to the case than the similarly afflicted RZE. Even if you're not a fussy person, you'll probably notice this within seconds, and it's one of those things you just can't unsee. This inconsistency isn't showcased on the renderings of the watch, where the titanium sections all appear in this matching near steel-like colour that isn't representative of the piece in reality. 
While unbiased information on this very niche subject is scarce, if Travis from RZE is to be believed, it's increasingly difficult to match up the colour of a titanium case and bracelet the further up the hardness scale you go. So perhaps I should give Phoebus some leeway here. This would explain why many Citizen watches that I've looked at have exhibited the same shortcoming. Anyhow, if that is true, then RZE has still done a better job of matching the two components whilst maintaining a higher hardness level. At least Phoebus hasn't cut corners on the glass. The sapphire crystal in place here won't let you down, mirroring the scratch resistance offered by the case. And the AR coating does a fair job of preventing obtrusive reflections. Something I can't accuse this Apollo of lacking is personality. I already know you've never seen a watch that looks quite like this one, as the aesthetic here is very quirky. Let's begin with the bezel. The only way to describe this is a castellated variant of a scalloped bezel, featuring wide gaps between each raised portion. Surprisingly, it doesn't hamper grip too much, with the lightweight bezel remaining easily rotatable despite the low number of grooves. The action is fairly good with minimal back play, and the alignment is perfect, though it doesn't exude the most confidence-inspiring sound when in motion. While the etching atop is also precise, it also houses my least favourite part of this whole package. Just look at that font! It looks like the generic impact typeface that Yanam would use on a PowerPoint presentation, right above the infamous Comic Sans. While very legible, I honestly think this cheapens the look of the piece significantly. If they were to ever release a smaller version of this watch, they'd have to switch this out for me to be tempted at all into buying one. Yuck. Now the worst aspect of this watch is behind us, let's move on to the best. The real reason I wanted to take a look at this watch, the dial. The Apollo features an intriguing sandwich dial, with a multitude of holes punched through, revealing lighter colours beneath. I think the amber tone used pairs very well with the grey dial, and it's interesting to see what they've attempted with the segmented hour markers, where only half is submerged. I like the inner sections, but the white parts do look a little like teeth, and I'm not a fan of those thrown in at each 90 degrees either. Their addition just reduces the consistency even further. Perhaps these could have been solid like the hour hand to give a more cohesive look. The handset itself is rather peculiar, with the hour hand possibly drawing inspiration from a shovel, with a cartoonish shape and tip large enough to potentially dig your way out of trouble in real life. This is paired with a skeletonized minute hand that again, I'm just not quite feeling. Outside of the black counterweight, it looks like it's been stripped from a different watch, which is never a good thing. At least the low profile second hand fits the bill and extends right out to the chapter ring, and the low light visibility is very impressive, with the readability of the watch ironically being better in the dark, with bright, long-lasting two-tone performance. For some reason, I expected the octopus icon to glow too. Alas, despite its appearance, it doesn't boast any luminescence. I like the little mollusk and definitely prefer it over the generic written version of the logo that you see elsewhere. It's symmetrical, distinctive, and well-sized without looking garish, though the latter is up to your interpretation. Another nice touch is the color match date wheel, which partly makes up for its awkward position far to the left of the chapter ring, which is likely necessitated by the movement used. Watch movement. Let's be real, you've probably already guessed what's on the menu here. It's Seiko NH35A. Seiko's well regarded movement provides reliable, low beat rate performance with hacking and hand winding, and it's much quieter than the equivalent Miyota automatics, so it's the obvious choice when available. It won't set the world alight, but gets the job done. Overall, I think this Apollo is a well built watch, but some of the divisive, questionable design decisions would push me towards their other offerings or towards an alternative large diver. If you're after something more attractive, then you'll want to avoid the Orient SK Diver at all costs. Tap the video on screen to find out why. It's terrible.